the genius of Halo era Bungie. When I think of timeless games that give me the same feeling as when I originally played them, the first one that comes to mind is Halo Combat Evolved. I still find myself periodically deciding to play through the campaign on Legendary again. Not for it. Did you are your build different? I can't do that. I did the I have done mission one and the library on Legendary Solo. I have ne I, I any other mission, I physically just can't. You are just built different, you absolute legend. I also, in all fairness, never actually went through Halo CE until 2019. Achievements, not for YouTube, not to become an amazing speedrunner, but because playing through the game, even though it's been out over 21 years and I played it since I was a kid, it's fun. It's still fun. Yeah. When it was announced that Halo 4 was in production, I was super hyped to see the continuation of Master Chief Story and see what a new studio created specifically to make Halo games could do with the franchise. Once Halo Why did his armor in the trailer look different that's not the halo farmer we got interesting Before finally came out i played it with my friends and we had fun with it but something just felt off <laughs> and after a couple months we went back to reach and i haven't touched my copy of halo 4 since but why halo 4 is better graphics it has more game modes spartan ops adds so much more content to the game it has more i'm actually really sad we never got spartan ops like two i'm so i'm really sad that they dropped this as a concept because i thought this was great as far as in a live service game right you can make live service of this super easy. You just give missions out every few months, right? Like that could have worked very well, especially for a live service model, which they seem to be heading in at that point. So I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things that Halo 4 had interesting things it brought to the table. I still, at the end of the day, ended up going back to Reach. Most of that was just the multiplayer at the time felt a little wonky, but I did find a home later in life in Halo 4's SWAT customization Love it has a multiplayer progression system so why did i stop playing it when i still play halo one which is over a decade older i think it can be summarized with this phrase 30 seconds of fun yeah in halo one there was maybe 30 seconds of fun that happened over and over and over and over again so right. if you can get 30 seconds of fun you can pretty much stretch that out to be an entire game i mean yeah encountering a bunch of guys melee attacking one of them before they were aware throwing a grenade into a group of other guys and then cleaning up the stragglers before they could surround you and so you can have all the great graphics and all the different characters and lots of different weapons with amazing effects but if you don't nail that 30 seconds you're not going to have a great game if, if to quote our man reggie if it's not fun why bother what keeps people coming back to games over and over and over and over and over again is that they have a fun gameplay loop. I mean, there's games like me and Destiny 2 where it is sunk cost fallacy and there's a little bit of an addiction factor to it. There's a reason I run Crotas every week at this point. However, not all games are like that. A game can just be sequences of fun action or sequences of just fun stretched out over an entire game, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that sounds like a fun game to me. As long as your gameplay loop, your core gameplay loop is enjoyable, and Halo does allow you, if you want to use, as I lovingly call it, the, the, the tennis ball launcher, the plasma pistol, because it looks like it launches tennis balls in one, right? Um, as long as you can use the plasma pistol, you can use the magnum, go with the bullet hose AR that was the bullet, you know, the AR in one, right? There's so many ways that you can tackle Halo 1, and it's the fact that you could tackle it in many different ways. Sure. There's definitely play styles that I feel are better. I feel on the library plasma pistols necessary, but if you can do it better using something different, or if you find that you want to do something for the heck of it, why not? Yes. Yeah, it also hit like a truck in one 30 got seconds of fun is a quote from Jamie Griezmer in 2003 that every diehard halo fan is familiar with. But out of everything in the nearly hour-long Halo 2 behind-the-scenes documentary, why is that short clip what stands out to most fans? Simply put, it's brilliant. Yeah, and it, it represents is. everything that Old School Bungie was about. Bungie was founded in 1991 by two University of Chicago students, Alex Seropian and Jason Jones. Legend. Well, technically, Alex founded the company and Jason joined shortly thereafter, but mm -hmm. you can think of them as co-founders. Of the two, Alex was more business-oriented, while Jason was more creative. In the words of Jason Jones, I was working on a game and Alex was trying to start a company. So, and that's the thing that I think, don't get me wrong, there are bad business practices in the industry, as with any industry. You have to, at the end of the day, you do have to have a strong business team, right? So say, for example, if Halo 6 came out right now, right? Like, like tomorrow, and people go, well, where's the marketing for it, right? 
what, what are we going to expect, right? You just want me to buy a blind product. And honestly, for a lot of games like that, it can work, right? Now, AAA studios, I'd argue it's a little different as especially of the past several years because AAA studios have shown time and time again they want to deliver a subpar product. They want to deliver a product, a minimum viable product on launch, and then they're going to fix it up over time, right? And that's just the expectation at this point. So you get a game like, yeah, Larian that releases Baldur's Gate 3. You get a game like uh, EA, out, ironically, releasing Dead Space Remake, right? And they're just complete in the box, you know. Cool, awesome. And sometimes they don't necessarily even have the best or even like the most wide ranging advertising. I didn't even know Dead Space Remake was coming out for until like a couple months beforehand. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII just showed up on Steam Store one day for me. Absolutely fell in love with that game. So you want to make sure you're having to balance because at the end of the day, you do have to pay the people that you're under. But if you go too hard on the money and you make the game not fun or make the game have a gameplay loop that isn't sustainable, you're just going to see people drop off. We actually saw this early Halo uh, Infinite, right? Halo Infinite had that early multiplayer launch, right? And it skyrocketed to popularity. But remember what happened after? They didn't have anything to keep it going, and they just wanted to go recycle the same microtransaction stuff. I'm calling a macro at this point from the price of something. $10 for cat ears? I paid full price for that, thank you. You know, macro transactions in their live service style store, right? I mean... Yeah, people are going to be like, well, I mean, you want my money, but, you know, I don't want to play the game. For me, it's a lot of it's been netcode. You know, apparently I'm the only one that's experienced netcode. Apparently people like Mint Blitz haven't experienced netcode. Never heard anything from them about that. Angry Joe apparently hasn't experienced netcode issues. Didn't hear anything about it in his review, even though I tweeted at him. I'm also small, right? But nothing about netcode. So I guess in the Northwest, I guess me, my buddy, and a couple other people are the only ones experiencing netcode issues. So... I mean, that drives me away from the game because constant desync, net lag. Um, you know, I'm hardwired into my modem. I can't physically do anything more. So there's a lot to consider. The business, circling back, the business side of things does need to be taken into account, but it needs to be taken into account in a relevant capacity. While Bungie now is known for Halo and Destiny, in the 90s they were one of the most respected game developers for the Mac, releasing a string of critical and commercially successful games. In 1993, Bungie released Pathways in a Darkness. Pathways sold over 20,000 copies, making it Bungie's first commercially successful game as it was their first to turn a profit. Hell yeah. Building on the success of Pathways in a Darkness, Bungie moved into their first office and released Marathon in 1994. Oh, there Marathon it is. Marathon was an even bigger success than Pathways, selling over 100,000 copies in its first year. I don't understand what modern Bungie is thinking with Marathon's re-release. I don't want to derail this too much. I, I don't understand where they're going with it. I don't think anybody is thinking it's going to be successful. I would love to be pleasantly surprised. I don't think they're going to have, especially with the way Destiny's been going, I don't think they're going to have the ability to do that. I, I just I think it's outside of modern Bungie's ability, even with all the funding. This spawned two sequels, which were also critically and commercially successful. And in just a few years, Bungie had established itself as a legitimate studio capable of creating quality games. They followed the Marathon trilogy by shifting to a completely new genre, real-time strategy. They released two more successful games, Myth and Myth oh, 2. Oh, I didn't know they but made I Myth. would be remiss if I didn't mention that Myth 2 was not profitable for Bungie. Right after Bungie began shipping the game to retailers, a bug was discovered where if you uninstalled Myth 2, there was a chance that your entire hard drive could be erased. Nice. So after they discovered this, Bungie decided to recall every single copy of Myth 2, which ended up costing them about a million dollars. When asked about Can the Can you imagine if someone like Activision Blizzard did this today? Wasn't it like... I know it's not Activision Blizzard, right? Remember when EA... Uh, it was the Anthem situation, right? Anthem was bricking like PS4s or something like that, right? Oh, it's been way too long since I, I, I just remembered this. How it was bricking actual systems. Can you imagine? Hey, yeah, we know this is bricking systems, but we're going to need to recall this. They wouldn't do that nowadays. They'd just be like, lol. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't even... You would never see this today. You would never actually see this. Microsoft doesn't, yes, no, but it, Bungie is now owned by PlayStation. Call Jason Jones said, The thing that made the decision easy was that if we were to ship the game anyway and try to fix the problem later, some people were gonna get screwed. And that was wrong. 
It hmm. might not have been very many people, maybe one or two, but it would have bothered us the rest of our lives. You would never see this in the modern game industry. And this is one of those things that the business side looks at nowadays and goes, no, 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 no. We cannot do this. Just go fix it and post. I don't care how long it's going to take. Go fix it and post. If someone's hard drive bricks, that's on them. This decision did end up leaving Bungie in a financial hole, but it also strengthened their reputation. So when yes. Bungie started looking for That's buyers, a bold Microsoft move. jumped at the opportunity, and in 2000, Bungie was acquired by Microsoft. This deal meant that their newest project, Halo Combat Evolved, which began production in 1999, would be an exclusive launch title for the original Xbox, a new console from a company that had never made a console before in a market dominated by Sony and Nintendo. Yeah, it the was. The Dreamcast also existed, but we don't really talk about that one. This Dreamcast, a lot of people, especially that I grew up with, a lot of people love the Dreamcast. I never had any experience with it, although I do, as far as I'm aware... I do understand that it is the last great successful Sony console from my understanding, or not Sony, uh, Sega, Sega console. Developing a launch title, Bungie knew that they had a chance to be the game on a brand new system, and they worked to make that a reality. So many elements and people came together to make Halo Combat Evolved with what it was, and I want to recognize a few. First and foremost, Microsoft itself deserves credit. Bungie had had a rebellious persona, and with the acquisition from Microsoft, many of their fans thought that they were selling out. But although Bungie was now part of Microsoft, they fought to keep their own independence and in ways of doing things. Microsoft, seeing the bigger picture, allowed Bungie to basically run themselves. God, Mar you wouldn't see that nowadays. You would not be able to see that nowadays. Like, that... I mean, that's what Bungie tried doing under Activision Blizzard, right? They wanted their own autonomy. And then now we have a, a model that we but people in the you know Destiny community are wondering, man, would they just have been better off being under Activision Blizzard? Because this feels like this is a lot worse, and they just don't have the funding at this point. So there's there's a, there's debate whether them trying to keep their autonomy was a good thing or not at this point in time, or if it just enabled a certain behavior. Nick's the Kurokatsune and Fraud. Thank you for the resubs. How's it going? Marty O'Donnell had worked on scores for Bungie games in the past, but in 1999, he was hired as an official Bungie employee. Marty was the audio lead composer Legend. and one of two credited sound designers for the first Halo game. Yeah. Marty is, hands down, the best video game composer of all time. Every single track on the original Halo soundtrack is memorable and great. My personal argue, favorite yes. is Undercover of Night. As a small team, Bungie employees would cross over into areas other than their own, and they had a culture of pushback, giving input, self-critique, and this means that even someone like Marty, who wrote music, recorded dialogue, etc., had other influence in seemingly random aspects of Halo, like the first Flood encounter. Now, this is where it's all right here. What Jamie wanted to do here is immediately have, boom, the Flood attack. And I said, please, just give me a little time Mm -hmm. to say, all right, you this saved, is a creepy place. You saved yeah, so that would make sense from a sound design standpoint. You're going to want to make sure to build that atmosphere. Something's not right here. You're seeing these visuals. You're hearing, you know, this this slow, daunting music, right? This does make sense. Well, I did. <laughs> right here. So when I say that Halo 1's story should be credited to Jason Jones and Joe Staten, I'm sure that they weren't the only ones to come up with plot points or ideas. As project lead, Jason helped plan out the higher level story of Combat Evolved while Joe Staten, as director of cinematics and writer of mission scripts, executed the story. When you watch a Halo 1 cinematic, the cinematography, dialogue, everything was Joe. In the script of each mission, for example, in the silent cartographer, you're looking for the map to control room and Cortana says this and Captain Key says that. That's Joe Staten. Nice. To give a picture of how beloved Joe is, when he was hired by 343 Industries in 2020 to work on Halo Infinite, the Halo community was ecstatic. Oh, and I remember this. I remember they were touting that they hired him back. Just a few days ago when Joe left 343, the community now is heartbroken and saying that Halo is dead. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's such a bad look though to hire somebody on as create you know this creative uh this created leave right or that you, you get halo back on track quote unquote and then for him to just leave like I, I have no ill will towards this man you know if he doesn't feel like he's being appreciated or maybe he's underpaid or maybe he's getting stifled i, I don't know what it is you know only he knows real or unless it's an article somewhere you know, that's not, it's really, really not a good look for Microsoft at that point. Or but three, back three. to the good times, Jason Jones, Joe Staten, and everyone else at Bungie helped create from a story perspective, a perfect first act. 
it's similar to the original Star Wars in that in both cases they didn't know that there would be a sequel and so they both right. tell standalone complete stories while also building a world and foundation that could later be built on right. through primary story entries and expanded lore through other forms of media. Well, Halo helps a good set book. many new standards in gaming but there's one specific aspect where Halo's legacy still shines. Controls. Halo wasn't the first console first person shooter, no. but prior to Halo, consensus was that FPS games were meant for computers. It makes sense, it's intuitive. How do you aim and shoot? You move your mouse and click. Right. While, yeah, console shooters like Goldeneye exist and were beloved. Okay, in, in, in our defense as human beings, where we only have two hands, right? Like, the Nintendo 64 controller just does not make sense. Like, it's, I. Uh, if, if somebody in chat right, doesn't know what a Nintendo 64 controller looks like, right? And I feel that this is going to be an, a, a common section war in itself, right? So this is what an N64 controller looks like. Now try playing Halo on that, right? Generally how I play this is I'll have my left hand here to be able to use the joystick, and I'll have my right hand here able to thumb A and B, right? However, there's not necessarily consensus on... <laughs> Where wh what hand goes where? <laughs> the, there's definitely people that use the use it in different ways, and it's it's just it's just one of those like weird things where it's uh it, it's been one of those gaming memes right where man I don't have that third arm I can't use the Nintendo sixty or so right so I guess circling back to the point right is that this is what we were playing Goldeneye and stuff on this is what you know console gaming FPS was doing right so. To see the Xbox controller, the beefy boy, come out, right? Just revolutionized how we play games. Shooter on this was weird oh, he showed to it. keyboard and mouse. The Xbox's Duke controller was a great controller for the time, and the problems that did exist with it were pretty much entirely solved by the S-Type later on, and for what Bungie had to work with, they mapped the buttons perfectly. Yes. Things we take for granted now, walking with the left stick and aiming with the right stick feels great. I don't think it was the best Halo control scheme. I think the Xbox 360 adding bumpers was a great change, and I prefer... Oh, absolutely. I actually forget the original Xbox didn't have bumpers. Halo reaches controls, but for the time, perfect. In whatever doubts someone may have had about a console first-person shooter just working, I think we're destroyed. Although there are obviously still people who prefer mouse and keyboard, the oh, fact absolutely. that it's even debatable is a testament to Bungie. There are so many things that made the original Halo great. Besides what I've already mentioned, there's the flood twist where the game just completely tonally shifts from epic sci-fi space opera to horror. The multiplayer and LAN parties, the perfectly balanced difficulties where as a five-year-old I could beat the game on easy and as a grown-up, legendary feels challenging but not unfair like some other entries in the franchise. Oh, <laughs> Jackal Sniper has sighted you. I can sit here and analyze this game or whatever, but there's just the fact that killing grunts with the assault rifle is fun. Headshotting enemies with the Magnum or the sniper rifle is fun. The sniper's when pretty When Jamie goaded. Griezmer is saying that Halo 1 was 30 seconds of fun stretched out to be an entire game, he didn't mean that literally, that it was the exact same encounters presented the exact same way no, over and over again. But it's, he was but it's 30 seconds of fun in varying ways. Describing Halo's core gameplay loop. He's saying that the foundation that Halo was built on before anything else was fun. Once you have a fun core gameplay loop, you can build on that by introducing new enemies and vehicles and environments and weapons and so on. But if your core gameplay is not fun, you can add whatever it is you want. You can have the greatest graphics, yeah. the best animations or whatever, but if your foundation is not fun, your game won't be great. I mean, and that's, I mean, I like, I actually found some of Battlefront 2 to be enjoyable. No, he's absolutely right. We talk, I've talked about this ad nauseum in terms of game design, where it, you want to have, say you're making a game, right? Say you're, say let's, let's go back to 1995 and we are making this cute little pet simulator game, right? Where you battle each other, right? You know, oh, well, what does it involve? Well, you, you catch all these different types of pets in these little balls and uh, you go around beating up other pets, right? Okay, what are we going to call it? Well, we'll call it Pocket Monsters, right? You know where I'm going with Pokemon, right? So what is the gameplay loop here? Well, I mean, you know, you, 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 you play the game, you beat other trainers, you gain XP, level up, evolve your Pokemon, and you really focus on just training and leveling, and you beat your eight gyms, and you do the Elite Four, and that's the end of the game, right? So at the end of the day, you do have a gameplay loop, which a lot of people, especially on the older ones, because there's like, what, 56 some odd ways after Misty, you can do the rest of the gyms in, if I remember correctly. It's actually insane. And you take a look at something like that, and it has a fun core gameplay loop, right? Cool. Yeah, then maybe we can talk about, you know, 
uh, adding different kinds of Pokeballs, adding different kinds of trainers, adding uh, new evolution types, adding like Mega Evolution, adding new mechanics like Gigantamax, um, adding new forms like uh, Alolan forms, right? But your core gameplay loop is, for all intents and purposes, fun. Phasmophobia is one of those that just I I have I I'm addicted to that game. I'm gonna be completely honest. Because it's such a fun gameplay loop. You start in the truck, you grab your equipment, you get in, you find where the ghost room is as fast as possible. You start, uh, you know, jamming as much equipment as you can into that room or two rooms, and you find the ghost. You maybe do the bonus objectives and you leave. I mean, you're not spending like normally, right? You're not spending three hours in a map. It's you know, five, ten, max, fifteen minutes if you're doing like prison, high school, something like that, right? And you're out having a core gameplay loop that's fun is something that eludes a lot of modern game developers especially in the AAA sphere and that is why they're doomed to fail unless they can understand this they're not really going to go anywhere that's what old school bungie represented they were at their core gamers who wanted to make the most fun games they could we are the most cynical people like we are the jaded crowd who if a game doesn't entertain us in five minutes we stop playing it Mood. that's the mindset that allowed bungie to create one of the greatest games ever but right from the start the design of the brutes was not consistent about reinforcing that they are meant to be worthy adversaries for the player mm -hmm. when i was a kid who couldn't wait for the release of halo 3 i would wake up every morning and watch the halo 3 vdoc et tu brute where they describe their changes to the brutes in halo 3 Bungie did several of these for Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, and Halo Reach. As well, the limited editions of Halo 2 and 3 contain DVDs with various extras, including I remember the some of these actually. For each yeah. Game. If I had to summarize, I the think of the Halo 3 one for the bonus the documentaries and developer commentaries in one word, that word would be refreshing. When you watch behind the scenes content and employee interviews from companies like Disney or 343 Industries, it feels fake. The whole thing just feels like marketing. Which, yes, don't it get is me marketing. wrong, obviously a Bungie Halo documentary is also just marketing, but it feels real. To watch Bungie go from super excited about Halo 2 to depressed and miserable after realizing how much content they have to cut, and talking about how much it sucks and how they're working 80 hour weeks, and when you listen to those Bungie employees now, they say, yeah, making Halo 2 sucks. It's so funny, like, the Halo 1 crunch was, you know, it was right. intense, but I don't have any negative memories of it at all. No, Halo, 2, Halo have... 2, I've heard, was incredibly crunch heavy, and it's problematic in an industry where crunch culture is almost the norm. Crunch culture is genuinely not okay, and I would argue that that's a problem with mismanaging from upper management. You need to be managing realistic deadlines or if you're needing the personnel hire more personnel to get it done in a, in a timely fashion crunch culture should not be idolized it's how people burn out it's how people um develop issues so many and halo 3 even i have some but it's an accurate telling of what happened when you listen to the developer commentaries with Jason Jones, Joe Staten, and Marty O'Donnell, they talk about developing each game and you learn a lot about it, but it isn't just them talking about how awesome their games are. They're joking with each other, they're pointing out errors and mistakes, talking about what was cut, and just roasting their own game. I, and I love the cheese yeah. animation there. And he like starts running away before he even knows what he's doing. <laughs> I'm going, I'm doing it. I don't know what I'm doing, but he's I'm going. going. <laughs> it's this that makes a quote like 30 seconds of fun impactful. You know that it's not just marketing BS. When Jamie Griezmer says that, you know he means it. When Adrian Perez talks about the difference between good enough and awesome and how good enough sucks, you know that he means it. I don't want to turn this into a 343 bash fest, but when thinking about why Halo 4 just didn't work for me when I loved all the games prior, including Reach, I think it's simply that 343 did not understand what made Bungie's Halo games great, and they didn't have the same passion for making great games. A 343 developer will talk about how great the Promethean effects are, that enemies dissolve when you kill them with a Promethean weapon. I okay. mean, yeah, that's cool. But I, I'm also in the minority here. I actually liked Halo 4 and, and Halo 5 even. I, I've been vocal about this. I, I'm aware I am in the minority like i, I they, they yeah the prometheans had cool designs it was cool that they you know got to uh dissolve into data bits and stuff i mean that was actually kind of cool but i mean where was where was the rest of the game <laughs> great but for the most part all of these promethean weapons with cool effects are functionally just clones of other weapons and then they, actually they just changed in uh halo 5 
some of the weapons function completely different in Phi. Like, the incinerator cannon functions way differently. And it always threw me for a loop. And cool, I killed a knight with a Promethean weapon and he dissolved, but that doesn't change the fact that knights are not fun to fight. I can still play the original Halo. Uh, I, if you are trying to run through Halo 4 or 5, pro tip, use the Needler. It, it carried me so hard on Legendary, it wasn't even funny. And I played Halo 5 because I didn't have internet at the time that I was playing it. I played Halo 5 without patch I, I played base halo 5 the a the ai on solo legendary was atrocious as soon as i updated it the ai got a lot better but man i played no patch halo 5 guardians that was wild like wow and although aged i think it still looks great halo 4 makes my eyes bleed and to give credit to 343 even though it's entirely different people now than then i think infinite looks awesome infinite does i mentioned look good. this already but joe staten decided to leave 343 industries a few days ago along with this 343 laid off about 10,000 employees for me infinite did remind me of the original halo games and i think it was a big improvement over 4 and 5 and although i still prefer the original games and i think infinite just did not have enough content the hiring of original bungie staff like staten like paul bertone made me think that infinite it would eventually become something great and at the very least it was in good hands honestly and that's the thing i had a, we actually did a full campaign stream of halo infinite recently it'll be on the vod channel at some point in the next couple weeks and it's always rough for me because apparently they just they just canceled the campaign dlc just flat out i was actually looking really forward to seeing offensive bias if that's who saved us at the end of that i'm i was so looking for it, it was zeta halo there is so much extended lore stuff for zeta halo like the it was eight proto grave mines on the ring it was the place where the master builder faba built the palace of pain like there's so much cool stuff we don't know what happened to Locke. we don't for, for all intents and purposes we assume june is dead because alexander wiped out that spartan training facility medical station thing right you know but we don't really know it, it's june so there could be a chance um Locke's helmet is on one of the what is it the the brute brothers the spartan killers right but we're not really going to get any of that i mean cool i'm glad that the multiplayer community is getting stuff in my opinion the netcode's still garbage i still have that netcode experience issues to this day it's insane but i mean you know i i guess as long as the multiplayer community is happy i'm personally just really sad that we're not I'm not going to get any real meaningful Halo story content and that's why I bought both the Xbox and PC copies of. So a little bit salty here. Now that's obviously not the case. But I can sit here and be a pessimist and mourn the Halo franchise and talk about how horrible everything is, but I'm not really interested in that. What I do know is that old school Bungie was lightning in a bottle, and although we'll never see something like them again, during that time they created some of my favorite games ever. Yeah. So regardless of what happens with future Halo titles or whatever Bungie now does with Destiny, even if they release the most god awful things I've ever played, none. Well, how long ago did this happen? Oh boy, yeah, this was. This this is Lightfall era. None of that will take away from Bungie's early greatness, and I'll still be playing their Halo games. No, I will still be playing. That's why I keep MCC and permanently installed on my systems. Sometimes I just want to go back through Halo Three, which, as of recording this, it's probably passed on the channel as this went, as this goes live on the channel. But I'll be doing a Halo Three uh, stream this Saturday. Going to go through the whole campaign. Going to go retroactively go through it. Um, you know, it's it's one of those that it's hard to see a franchise hurt like this. And you know, I will play. I think at this point the community is where halo's at the community is spearheading it with mods the community is spearheading it with with content with game modes you know it, it really feels like well halo infinite isn't a better place and i will actually agree with installation zero zero that halo is in a better place than it's been in years it i see why people still are drawn away from it and we may never be able to recapture original Halo, but why keep MCC installed? In fact, as far as I'm aware, it might still be on Steam sales. So if you haven't, definitely check Steam sales because it goes on sale for like 15 bucks. I'm not paid. I'm not sponsored by 343 Microsoft, etc. I would like to be, though. I'd like to be a Halo concert. <laughs> I digress, though. This was an awesome video by an awesome person. I ended up seeing this video out of the corner of my eye and wanted to uh, 
give them some notoriety, give them, give them some uh, traffic if I can. I thought this was an absolutely awesome video. If you want more Halo content, they definitely have more Halo content. Looks like even some speedrunning topics of that interest you. But alas, I will see you in the next one.